Welcome to the Sound of Movement podcast. Today we're talking about balance, balance with your training, balance with your workouts, and why the fitness industry is creating imbalanced bodies. We've been personal trainers here at Unity Gym for about 17 years now, and these are our opinions on how the fitness industry is letting you down. What's up everyone, welcome to the show. My name is Rad Burmeister. I'm joined by Rich, and we are Unity Gym, experts at turning driven people into athletes. This episode is brought to you by the Unify Movement System, the only online program effectively balancing strength, flexibility, and fitness so you can unleash your inner athlete. You can get daily coaching by us, plus our epic foundations prep program and revolutionary structural balance blueprint to create your ideal program and optimize your performance by joining our online coaching. As a valued listener, you can use the link in the description to get your first month free. Also, I'm excited to announce that we still have another 24 hours left on our epic flash sale for our rehab programs. You can get our shoulder rehab program, our golfers and tennis elbow rehab, knee rehab, lower back rehab. We've got a bunch of rehab programs that are all amazing. You can get them for a really great price right now, so don't miss out. Now, before we get started, warm welcome if you're on the live stream in the UMS Movement Mastermind Facebook group. Leave a comment and we'll send you some love. And remember that anyone can join that group and interact. And lastly, a shout out to our YouTube athletes and podcast listeners catching the replay. Hit the like button or subscribe to support us. How are you today, Richie? Good, Rad, thank you. Yep. Excited for another topic, another week. How about you? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, had a good weekend. I'm, um, yeah, looking forward to this one. It's a, it's a funny topic for us because we, um, you know, we, we put a lot of time and effort into thinking about how we can add value to people's lives and you know demystify this this whole sort of fitness journey because you know people listening to podcasts like this uh, or, or watching these shows are you know really looking for some answers usually people are you know typing something in and, and trying to find an answer for something there's a lot of information out there a lot of um a lot of confusion for a lot of people we get a lot of people asking us questions that seem very confused with with where to go they've had conflicting advice and today's really the day where we, we throw some stones at, at some other people and what other people are doing. Because the truth is that what we see, the majority of the fitness industry is, uh, is creating imbalanced bodies. And, and today we want to tell you why. Because in, in the UMS Movement Mastermind, sorry, in the UMS uh, program, the Unify Movement System, we unify strength, flexibility and fitness. And we do that for a very good reason. We've been training for a long, long time, and we found that when you don't do that, you create imbalanced bodies, and imbalanced bodies um, lead to issues. So what do you mean by imbalanced bodies? Maybe we should clarify that. Yeah, um, for sure. I mean, and for us, an imbalance means um, at the grassroots level, it's an imbalance between strength, flexibility, and fitness. If you have one of those without the other, you have an imbalanced body because you're focusing really on you know, one of the, of the cornerstones of of health, but not all of them. So for example, you know, we'll see people that are runners that yeah. are exceptional runners. Like they would absolutely annihilate me in a VO2 max test, you know, which is the the um, gold standard, I guess, for measuring cardiovascular fitness. If I went for a run with them, I'd, I'd barely even be able to keep up with them for a block. Um, but those same people um, have a lot of problems throughout their body from a lack of muscle mass and strength, yeah. you know? On the same, on the other, other hand, we'll get people that come into our gym that have been doing yoga for, for nine years mm. and they are phenomenal at it. Like they are so much more flexible than I am. The positions that they can get themselves in are unbelievable. Often they can do handstands and some pretty cool stuff. Um, but it, again, strength wise, really lacking. Some real imbalances in their body. Usually with yoga people, it's uh, balances uh, with pulling. They're, they're really weak with pulling. Yeah. Then. We'll get people that are like footy players who are really strong and really fit, but they can barely touch their toes. And they're coming in here because they're always rehabilitating torn hamstrings or whatever it is because of yeah. this imbalance between uh, strength and flexibility. So at the grassroots level, 
That's what I mean by the imbalance. And I'll go deeper into it in a minute. Have you got anything yeah, yeah. you want to add to that? Yeah, maybe the key word being a specialized, uh, specialist yep. or specializing an area yep. um, rather than being a generalist. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, so that's a great point. You know, we see um, what we define as a specialist or a generalist is if, if your training specializes in something like running, like football, like gymnastics, like weightlifting, like yoga, um, really in anything, if, if, if all of your time goes into that one thing and you reject everything else that's out there, that's what we call a specialist. Hmm. And specialization leads to uh, imbalances, a lot hmm. of imbalances. Um, what we do with the UMS, with the Unified Movement System, is we consider ourselves generalists. And the reason why we, we say that is that we've learned from a lot of different people, a lot of really, really noteworthy teachers, people like in person, face to face, um, we've worked with Charles Poliquin, um, Tony Bataji, Aaron McKenzie, uh, Ida Portal, um, Christopher Summers, um, head coaches, as in not Christopher Summers himself, but you know people that work for him in gymnastics bodies. Um, Ian King, um, some very exceptional martial arts um, coaches. And as a generalist, what we've done is over the years, we've taken the things that we believe are the most valuable into our program and we've pushed aside the things that we believe aren't so valuable and that itself has been a very hard experience to do hasn't it been richie because when we create one hour workouts yeah it's very very hard to to get rid of certain things and and we've had some debates um, between you yanni and me that have lasted years about what should and shouldn't be in our workouts because we were coming at it from different perspectives, which is a really, really good thing, you know, for the listener and for the people that are doing the UMS, what you guys get is a program that's really been battle tested for a long time. Yeah, it's been back and forward between our minds for years now, like different iterations with the programming, the, the exercises we've selected, uh, trial and error. There's a lot of sort of theory that's gone into like molding this program and, um, you know, it's not perfect. I, I'm sure we're going to continue to iterate on it. But, um, yeah, it's been it's trialed and tested. That's for sure. Yep. And, I mean, before we go further down, you know, how we get it right, we're, let's, we're going to we'll stick to the topic of discussion today. We're going to throw some stones at how yep. other people are doing it wrong. How the fitness industry is getting it wrong. Yeah, how the fitness industry has. And, we, you know, that's a broad statement, but it's a, it's a statement that we can say because we've been in the fitness industry for um, Yanni and I for almost 18 years now, Richard for almost nine years. And so we've got a lot of skin in the game. We've, we've been around the block. We've been to plenty of sports um, you know, uh, exhibitions and fitness exhibitions, the annual um, ones that they have for the industry. And we've gone to a lot of other gyms uh, and we've got a lot of friends that, that run gyms and, and that do things. And, and what we see is in, in the most popular, um, you know, group training format. So if you're going to the gym and doing your own thing, I can almost guarantee you that your training is imbalanced because people that are just doing their own thing, um, I've never seen anybody ever that's doing a, 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 a program that covers a balance between strength, flexibility, and fitness on their own that aren't professionals. And in all honesty- It's very rare. Sorry? It's very, it's very rare. rare. Very rare. Yeah. So let's, let's forget those people. So you're going to somebody else, you're paying them, putting your faith in them that they're gonna give you the health and fitness that you want. Now, what we see in Australia is, like if we talk about the general, the place that is maybe getting it better than others would be the CrossFit community yeah. because they do def they have a great balance between strength and flex uh, strength and fitness. Yeah. Those guys are so strong yeah. and so fit, but they don't have the best balance between flexibility. Yeah. We don't when we hear what people do at CrossFit gyms or when we get our friends that are CrossFit athletes that come in here, they are definitely yeah. strong definitely fitter than we are yeah. often stronger than we are in a lot of things yeah but their flexibility doesn't stand up next to ours at all yeah but um they're strong in certain movements like mm -hmm. let's yeah, not forget right. how unbalanced crossfit workouts can be mm -hmm. unless mm -hmm. you're doing the sort of unconventional wad mm -hmm. or unconventional yeah. crossfit style workout but many many people aren't many people are following just the wads mm -hmm. yep. and um they're pretty unbalanced in itself mm -hmm. yep. um 
Yep. And then you, if you in Australia, if you go to the another really really big and really popular franchise group training uh, method F45, again probably a um, a good balance between strength and fitness. I'll get into a little. Uh, sorry, yeah, strength and fitness, as in they do resistance training in their workouts and they do fitness training, but zero flexibility training. Yeah. In the 45 minute workouts that you do there, you do absolutely no flexibility training at all. And which again creates a major imbalance. And then if you go even further, their strength training is, is it doesn't stack up to what we do at all. You're yeah. not, um, like we've spoken to people that have trained at F45 gyms and in classes of 40 or 50 people, they have uh, one or two squat racks. And when you get around to the station where you're doing your deadlifts, um, you've only got 40 seconds at it and you, you basically do whatever the bar is. You just pick up the 60 kilo bar because that's the heaviest bar that they've got there and you do your, your reps. And those same people come to Unity Gym and within a few months they're deadlifting 140 kilos. So that's not real strength training. Like mm. sure, you're picking up weights, but that's not training in a way that's going to make you objectively stronger. Like, yeah. um, you know, I mean, an, an objective strength improvement, you know, would be to go from a body weight deadlift to a double body weight deadlift you know for most people in less than 12 months yeah. you know that would that's a very moderate strength improvement um you know if you went to a strength training gym like a weightlifting gym or a powerlifting gym they'd laugh at that that's nothing you know so um so that's in th those are imbalanced workouts and then you know you look at other really popular training methods like yoga or martial arts or um gymnastics probably like if, if we'll go into gymnastics in a sec but yoga and martial arts are um uh definitely not balanced at all because they do almost no resistance training whatsoever i did martial arts for over a decade at, at many many different gyms and there's no weightlifting or anything involved in it and i developed major problems in my shoulders same with yoga gymnastics gets it close but where the imbalances come with gymnasts is from upper to lower body you only need to look at look at the best of the best. You only need to mm. look at the best of the best gymnasts. And um, man, do those guys look like they skip leg day, don't they? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And yes, the, I mean, you can't argue with their performance in gymnastics, but it's a specialization, right? Yeah. 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 And why, why do you think the fitness industry is getting, creating so many unbalanced bodies? Do you think it's because they, it's really focused on the specificity um, way of training the specifics um, because of specialists because at the end of at the end of it like any other industry it's about making money hmm. and there's a it's almost like when you say oh we're, we're here to make money like you're a you know you're a cop out you're a sell out you're, you're whatever no not at all we need we all need to pay our bills yeah. and, and we have at times we have had to take our program and bring it back to more of what the masses would go for because mm. we could see that we created something that was too niche, too specialization, that wasn't catering to enough people. Yeah. And on one hand, we wouldn't have survived. We, we, we had too much of a churn of members. Yeah. But, and, and then on the other hand, you say, well, if this is what we're doing, then we're actually doing a disservice to people because we get people that come in that are interested in us and they find that it's not for them and they leave. So we can't even affect people positively. Yeah. So I think that within the fitness industry, I think that what's happened is that it, it's because it's been going for so long and people have found what works and what makes money for so long. And, you know, for the average punter, because I was like this myself, right? It was until only recently that I rejected the idea of doing strength and conditioning training. I was yeah. just all about training for skills. And I, and I truly believed that I didn't need to do strength and conditioning yeah. if I wanted to do the calisthenics and the movement skills that I wanted. It took me a long, long time to really accept that, that no, if I want to get better at this, this is what I have to do. And I think that what the average punter does is what I do. They think, no, I don't want weightlifting. I just want to get flexible and mm -hmm. I want to feel good, so I'm going to do yoga. Or no, I just really want to get strong. I'm going to go to the gym and lift weights. I don't need to do any stretching or anything and I don't need to do cardio. And yeah. Or... No, I, you know, I just really love running and I want to be fit and that's all it is. As long as I'm fit and healthy and I'm not going to have a heart attack, then I'm, you know, I'm fine. I'll just go running. So I think that the fitness industry has as a whole, because of course, we're, 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 this is a metaphor here in an umbrella term because the fitness industry, no one works for the fitness industry. Everybody works for themselves, but you're in the fitness industry. But generally, the fitness industry, the, the coaches, the, the 
the entrepreneurs, the business people, the people that are running the gyms, that are creating their programs, they've realized that they make more money if they cater to that desire for specialization that people have. Mm -hmm. People have a desire for specialization. People yep. decide one day that they want to learn martial arts and they don't think, okay, well, I want to do martial arts, but, I'll, but I need to make sure that I stay strong and um, flexible or whatever it is so I can't just go to the gym and just do my... They don't do that. They yep. say, I want to do martial arts, I'm going to go to a martial arts school. And the martial arts schools have figured out that if they don't teach people martial arts as quick as possible, people are going to leave and go somewhere else, right? Yeah. That's what yeah. I reckon. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll tell you what I see and why I feel like the fitness industry is leading people in, into um, imbalanced bodies. Now, don't get me wrong. Any sort of fitness is better than no fitness. I think if you're exercising, doing whatever, it's better than doing nothing. Um, it's a lot healthier for your body. Um, but I, I see there's a... Most of the practices out there that people undertake, whether it's for performance or aesthetics, it's all driven towards a goal, you know. Um, so a runner uh, aspires to be, you know, someone that can gr uh, run great distances or uh, very uh, short distances very, very quickly. Um, you've got bodybuilders that are trying to gain as much mass and muscle definition as possible. You've got other sports that are leading you down a path uh, for, of optimal performance, but in a specific type of movement, you know, um, whatever that is. And they all generally um, become very specified to get getting better at that, that skill, you know. And there's not a lot of great programs out there to help balance that to, you know. So when we say balance, I mean, so... Um, being equally strong with your pulling as you are pushing um, upper body versus lower body strength. You know, they're all very sp specific. Um, and over, you know, months and years of training like this, yeah, you, you end up getting this body that can do these things really well. But um, when it comes to the other things outside of that little area of specificity, you become quite challenged and you've got a lot of weakness there. And that's where people sort of when they do unexpectedly have to go there, they, uh, they injure themselves or they don't perform very great. Mm. Um, just like we found out with multiple people coming in into our gym looking for a bit more of a balance. You know, they've got, um, yeah, this severe uh, tightness through their legs because they've been running every day or... Um, they, they find themselves so weak in specific strength exercises um, that are outside of the norm of their training, um, like uh, rotator cuff strength relative to bench press. Um, yeah, that's what I think. I think um, it's sort of led people down this uh, path of um, chasing after the uh, athletes, you know, mm -hmm. and athletes train in a very unbalanced way, you know, most mm -hmm. of them do to get to that level. They don't train like us because yeah if you want to be the best gymnast in the world you got to do gymnastics all day every day yeah yeah for sure yeah and yeah unfortunately i mean we see it we see it all the time the the the, the further the specialization like the further somebody gets down the path of specialization the more imbalanced the body becomes yeah generally most 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 of the time and you know people talk about um um overuse injuries and I, I love Ido Portal's um, definition of this he, he says overuse is a specialist disease mm. it's something that happens to specialists and I train personally myself for um, on a bad day I'll do two hours of training and on a good day I'll do three hours maybe even more and people say to me God how can you train for that long well I'm not training in a specialist way so people think that three oh my god what you're sweating and killing yourself for three hours no not at all there's a, there's a lot of that time where it's very relaxing for me and it's very um, enjoyable and it's about movement and about um, mobility and, um, you know, just, just keeping my body feeling good and or skill training, you know. So, yeah, I think, um, I think that's where it comes from. But we haven't even gone deeper into the So what we've really talked about is strength, flexibility and fitness, you know. So that's the first element of balance that we refer to. But the other element of balance that we refer to is balance between agonist and antagonist in a joint yep. and balance from left to right um, of the body. And that is something that that is a whole nother layer of where other programs that we're seeing really fail. And I'll tell you how, uh, if you don't do a one to one pushing and pulling ratio in every joint, you will come into problems. And what do I mean by that? 
a push and pull within the elbow joint. A pull would be a bicep curl and a push would be a tricep extension. Mm -hmm. They are both opposing movements within the joint which train opposing muscles. And if there's an imbalance, if you train your guns, if you just work on your biceps three days a week for six months and really build the biceps up without doing any tricep extensions, your elbow is going to be in a severely compromised state. It's going to be really um, prone to injury. And then when you try to express that strength, um, you know, out in any kind of sport or athletic endeavor, you can really run into problems. And then the same from left to right. If you have an imbalance, like if you've had an injury where you, you know, tore your rotator cuff in your left shoulder years ago and you never dealt with it properly and then you decide to go to the gym one day and you start doing a lot of barbell work like bench pressing and shoulder pressing, which is really common for a lot of people, then what happens is when you go close to failure, and the left side, which is the compromised side, can't handle the weight anymore, it starts to do less and your body will naturally start to push more with the right side, which means that the point of failure where the majority of the adaptation occurs, meaning the, the most of the growth, the point of failure, the stronger side achieves that failure and gets the majority of that adaptation, which means you make that imbalance even worse. And you, you gotta wrap your head around what I've just said there. So you're going to the gym, you're thinking you wanna make yourself stronger and make yourself more capable, and just by doing the workouts that everybody else is doing, but not understanding how to create this balance, you make your body more prone to injury. Yep. You make your injuries worse. Like it's a really serious thing that we're talking about here. Yeah. I think um, when, I, when I used to play soccer as a kid, you know, I had no concept of um, uh, like by kid, I mean teenager. I had no concept of... Um, balance in training you know and i'm sure there's plenty of people out there that still play soccer and only train that couple times a week just to get in their practice sessions and that's the only thing they do and then they go play a game on the weekend mm. and that's it and if i did that as an adult oh man like i would pay for it big time mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and knowing what i know now about what creates balance and what's optimal for you know creating strong legs strong core and a strong physique to, to play optimally man you, you, you if you're playing a sport like that right now you better hope that you're playing uh, that you're you know practicing something other than ball work you know running dribbling um cardio there has to be so much more range in your joints and and strength expressed through your body to make you more resilient especially as you age like when you're getting in your 30s if you want to keep this up jesus yeah you got to do a lot more than just run around for a couple of hours on the pitch yeah yeah absolutely i couldn't agree more and it's um yeah look at this is something for the for a lot of people a lot of people get quite challenged with this you know because when you when you say to them look yeah your training is imbalanced and it's going to lead to issues for a lot nobody wants to admit that what they're doing isn't the best way to do things and um you know if that's where you're at um just challenge yourself ask yourself how your body's feeling um you know and maybe consider are you are you balancing your workouts and and people will say oh well, well what does that mean what does a balance mean we're talking a literal, like for example, strength to flexibility, one-to-one -one ratio. Not like, oh yeah, I do strength training and then at the end I do five minutes of stretching. No, literally a one-to-one -one ratio, which means if you do strength training for, 40, for an hour, you would do an hour of flexibility training as well. Now, nobody's doing that, not that we've seen. It's so rare that people get that balance right. And there's many, many different types of flexibility training that we're talking about. And we have a specific way of doing it in the UMS where, you know, for every set of strength training, you also do a set of flexibility training. And, um, but then also that same balance with, with fitness, where you're also balancing fitness so that you, you don't just become really strong and flexible, but you also I increase your fitness at the same rate. So yeah, have a look into it. We'll, what we'll do um, tomorrow, maybe we can reveal how we do it in the UMS. But before we finish today's show, um, quick shout out to Vinny Brown. He's saying, glad the time for the live podcast is more US friendly. It's about 8.30 p.m. here. That's awesome, man. Are you over in, um, uh, is that Pacific time over there where you are? Are you in the Pacific time or the Eastern time? Um, and Kurt Dyer is saying, always love the insights you guys bring to people passionate about improving their health. Keep up the great work, guys. And then he's also saying respect from over the ditch here in Sheepland. For those of you that don't know where Sheepland is, it's New Zealand. Did you hear my New Zealand joke last week, Kurt? Were you, uh, were you privy to it? <laughs> um, so thanks for tuning in, everyone. 
Really hope that you got something out of that show. And if you haven't yet, uh, go and grab one of our rehab programs if you're struggling with an injury and you want to uh, get back into what it is that you're doing. They're an amazing, uh, amazing um, uh, pro set of programs there that are really going to help you with whatever it is that you're doing. Thanks for tuning in. Stephen Pellegrino is saying EST time now is great. Uh, what time is it in, in... Oh, so it's EST time, is it? Is, is it 9 p.m. over in, um, in Eastern time? And if that's the case, do you guys... Uh, do daylight savings because it might this might actually work out that it stays exactly the same because in this Sunday we move out of daylight savings times which means that currently where it's two minutes to 12 now it's 11 58 a.m. it'll actually be two minutes to 11 which means that the um, uh, the podcast will be if it's eight, if it's 9 p.m. for you guys now it'll actually be at 8 p.m. But I'm pretty sure that you guys moved to daylight savings time in this weekend. Is that correct? It, because if you do move to daylight, oh, you're already in daylight savings time. Okay, cool. So it'll actually be at 8 p.m. for you um, next week, as of next week. So just make sure you're aware of that because we move off daylight savings time this, this weekend. So we go back an hour. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Really happy that we're catching our um, American audience uh, or U.S. audience at a better... Uh, time and um, yeah, great to uh, great to have you guys on the show. We'll see you all over in the UMS online coaching group in a minute. See ya. Health is about performance, not just body image. You better be willing to accept what you're going to have to do to get there. We'll start focusing on movement goals, strength goals, flexibility goals. When you nail that skill, it's there forever. The body image goal doesn't get you that. It's far. the consistency and frequency that's going to get you there. It's not the intensity. There's no shortcuts to mastery and movement. Destination doesn't change overnight, but your direction will. The gym is not the place to beat up the body that you hate. It's the place to build the body that you love. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.